more metrics and that's going to come from a concept called mutual information we've actually already seen mutual information it's actually just information gain so what is the entropy of a Gaussian well, it's actually infinity in fact what is the Shannon entropy of any variable X with continuously infinite outcomes so if the sample space is a subset uh, of the real line a non -z measure zero subset the answer is infinity now you're probably saying oh that kinda shoots the whole entropy thing in the foot but it's true the concept of Shannon entropy is not the same as the entropy concept in physics although closely related they're not the same so to see this let's suppose that for random variable X we let P of X be the probability that capital X is less than little x and let's suppose that P of X is differentiable actually all we need is absolutely continuous with respect to some measure so if uh, we want to find the probability then we can use the derivative little p of x which is the probability density function and the probability that a is less or equal to x is less or equal to b is the integral from a to b little p of x dx and that is the limit as the norm or the largest delta x goes to zero of the Riemann sum p of x j times delta x j now there's a general rule in applied math transcendental functions have dimensionless arguments so if I've got x feet squared then I can think of that as an area in square feet but the natural log of x feet makes no sense what's the logarithm of a foot this is a notion that's abused by many uh, but in practice when you actually the rubber hits the road you have to do something mathematically scientifically you you can abuse it for example suppose you've got motion in a circle of radius r as a function of time t well that can be written as x equals r cosine of omega t y equals r sine of omega t t is in seconds so therefore the angular velocity not surprisingly is in radians per second so that omega times t is dimensionless it doesn't have units because radians are dimensionless so what are radians? If I've got the arc of length capital S subtending an angle theta along a circle of radius R then theta measured in radians is the arc length over the radius that's S meters over R meters meters cancel and so this theta is a dimensionless uh, measure radian measure is dimensionless so let's look at what we're trying to do here we're saying in the discrete case we have the distribution the probability that capital X is equal to little x in the continuous case we're taking the probability of density times a delta x j and saying that that is the probability that something happens between x and x plus delta x so let's look at the entropy using our interpretation of density uh, density times delta x being probability so the entropy of a continuous variable x would be the sum p of x j delta x j that's the probability times the log of p of x j delta x j so that once again is a probability so this is probability log probability now we can divide or split that out using the uh, properties of the logarithm so we'll get a sum p of x log p of x j times delta x j minus the sum p of x j delta x j times the log delta x j then you can take the limit as the max over delta x goes to zero and what you get is negative of the integral from negative infinity to infinity p of x log of p of x dx minus the limit as the norm of the partition goes to zero of the log of delta x because the sum j equals one to n of p of x j delta x j that's a sum of probabilities and that sums to be one or worst case scenario it certainly is bounded between zero and one uh, given that it's a probability density now this raises all sorts of red flags so first off 
a probability density has units. So if I've got p of x dx, then p of x is in units of percent per unit x. If x is in feet, then p of x is in units of percent per foot. Uh, likewise, delta xj has to have units. And so we are taking logarithms of things that have units, uh, which we don't allow in going from scientific to mathematical. And this uh, limit as delta x goes to zero of log of delta x becomes infinite. And the entropy should be infinite. Because as the partitions get smaller and smaller, all these probabilities, p of x dx, approach zero. Well, an event with a probability close to zero produces nearly infinite surprise when it occurs. So by definition of the integral, and the p of x dx is approaching zero, and then summing over uh, a partition that includes many, many of these terms, we should have many, many highly surprising events. And the key here is that if the answer was, say, exactly 3, then we would be surprised by the answer 3.1. We would be surprised by the answer 3.0001. And as n goes to infinity, any number other than 3 would gi give us uh, an infinite surprise in the limit as we go to infinity. See, as the ability for x to differ in the nth digit increases, the surprise in the occurrence of differing in the nth digit goes to infinity. So think about it. If you saw two numbers and they both match for the first 10,000 digits and then suddenly there was a difference in the 10,000 and first digit, you would be surprised and you would be uh, orders of magnitude more surprised than to see two numbers that differ in the first digit after the decimal point. And this goes to infinity. So how do we fix the problem? Well, maybe we can use more variables. So let's suppose x is a random variable with density p and y is a random variable with density q. And let's take the difference. Now the difference has the property that the logarithms will cancel uh, at the log terms going to infinity. The limit of logarithm terms cancel. And I'll get just the integrals. So the infinities canceled each other. Uh, I still have log of something with units because p and q have units. So we still have our red flags on the arguments of the logarithms. So another approach, maybe we could use relative entropy, which is also known as kuhlbach liebler divergence. So what we do there is we keep the p uh, of x used as the probability density the same in both, but in one we use the density for uh, p, and the other we use the density for uh, density for x, and the other one we use the density q for y. And when we do that, we get a difference of logarithms, and that gives us negative of the integral, negative infinity to infinity, p of x log of the ratio q of x over p of x dx. Now the units have canceled, and I have a perfectly valid information theoretic expression. So this is the relative entropy, which I can write without the negative by simply flipping the ratio inside the logarithm. It has the properties that if I take the divergence of a random variable x with itself, I get zero because I would have the log of p over p. The Gibbs inequality can show that the divergence between x and y has to be non-negative. So let's take a look at that. So let's take a look. I'm going to draw the line from negative 1 up the y-axis up through 1 on the x-axis. It's line y equals x minus 1. And that is tangent to y equals log x at the x-intercept and therefore because the logarithm is concave down the natural log of x has to be less than or equal to x minus 1 as long as x is strictly positive. Now let's use that inequality. We're going to write the negative sum 
of p sub i times the natural log of q sub i over p sub i. And the q sub i over p sub i here is acting like the x from our inequality. So that has to be greater or equal to the negative of the sum of p sub i. And we're using the q sub i over p sub i here as the x equivalent. And so we got a q sub i of p sub i minus 1. Let's simplify that. That's going to be the negative of the sum So that's going to be the negative sum multiplying through the p sub i to the quantity q sub i over p sub i minus 1. Negative sum q sub i minus p sub i. Split that into two sums. We'll get the negative of the sum of the p q sub i's plus the sum of the p sub i's. Both of those add to 1, so their combination is 0. So this negative sum p sub i log q sub i over p sub i is non-negative. What that means is we can just write it out. Using the property of the logarithm. And all that has to be greater or equal to 0. And then we'll subtract the sum p sub i log p sub i term to the other side of the inequality. And that means the negative log sum of the p sub i log p sub i is less than or equal to the negative sum p sub i log q sub i. And that's Gibbs inequality. And of course it works for any logarithm because logarithms are just uh, scaled versions of the natural logarithm. So, our Kullback Lieber divergence is this integral, negative of the integral negative infinity to infinity p of x log q of x over p of x dx. Or I can write it as just a positive integral, flipping the p of x over q of x. So if I'm looking at discrete, I'm doing the sum, and if I'm looking at uh, continuous, I'm doing the integral of the densities. And this is called a divergence uh, and not a distance because it's not symmetric. Now notice that I can write q sub x, q of x, p of, I can write q of x dx and p of x dx inside of the argument of the logarithm. And that's also dimensionless. And that means I've got the form of the sum the integral uh, uh, the logarithm of Horatio probabilities times a probability p of x dx. So if I want to I can dis define a discrete version which works just exactly like the continuous version. In particular it's just the sum of the probabilities the log of the probability ratio. Or the sum j equals 1 to n p sub i log q sub uh, j equals 1 to n p sub j log q sub j over p sub j. Now if y is uniformly distributed then the q sub i would be 1 over n. A little bit of algebra shows us that we would get the negative log of 1 over n times the sum of the p sub j's but that's probability distribution so that adds up to 1. And so we get the log of n minus the entropy of x. And therefore we can see that h of x uh, will always be equal to the uh, log of n minus the KL divergence. Now let's rewrite relative entropy in terms of self-information. We can see it's the sum p sub j i of y minus i sub x so it's the average of the information difference per outcome between x and y. 
Now, let's go back to information gain. This will be very important. So the information gain uh, is h of y minus h of y given uh, capital X. We write that out as a difference of two summations. Remember, a marginal probability is the sum, uh, marginal probability of y is the sum over the x's of the joint p of xy. So we use that in the first term, get a double sum p of xy i of y minus the sum p of x uh, times uh, the sum p of y given x i of y given x. And remember that p of y given x is equal to the joint over the marginal for x. And so that gives us the double sum where uh, the piece of x's can now cancel. And that gives us the double sum over the x's and y's, p of xy, i of x plus i of y minus i of xy. So in other words, the information gain is the average difference between the sum of the individual surprises and the joint surprisal. In fact, this shows that the information gain is symmetric in x and y. Kind of surprising that uh, because it wasn't a symmetric definition. So the information gain in y upon learning x is the same as the information gain in x upon learning y. And we can write that in a number of different ways using definitions of conditional entropy. Uh, notice that the information gain will be the sum of the uh, entropies of the x and y respectively minus the joint entropy h of x comma y. And because it's symmetric we're going to give it a new and probably a more appropriate name we call it mutual information, and right? I of capital X semicolon. So let's relate the mutual information to KL divergence. So we replace all the informations with their, so we get negative the sum over the X, the sum over the Y's, P of XY log of P of XY divided by the marginals P of X and P of Y. And notice that's just the kullback lieber divergence between the joint density and the product of the individual densities. And of course the product of the individual densities would be the joint density if x and y were independent. So it's a measure, in some sense mutual information is a measure of how much, how much you diverge from independence. So notice that KL divergence is our starting point, not the entropy H of X. Uh, mutual information written as either uh, integrals or double integrals. And once again, notice that if I define I of XY in terms of densities uh, using integrals instead of distributions using sums, then I get KL divergence over a two-dimensional space because it has to be a double integral over X and Y. And notice that units cancel. There aren't any applied math issues here. So P of XY is in percent per unit X per unit Y. Or if square bracket X denotes units of X, then square bracket of P of XY is percent over square bracket X square bracket Y. So therefore, the, uh, the units all cancel, and we have a dimensionless argument in the logarithm. And notice that if X is independent of Y, then the mutual information is zero. In other words, there's no information about y given knowledge of x as y is completely independent of x. Now let's go back to the Gaussian. So if you have independent Gaussians, then there's no mutual information by what I just said. We can look at jointly distributed Gaussians. That's where p of x, the density, is uh, 1 over the square root of the quantity 2 pi to the nth power times the determinant of sigma. Where sigma here is the covariance matrix of the variables in capital X, which is x1 to xn. And the x bar will be the mean of all the x's, and so we'll get a uh, joint distribution uh, 
e to the negative one half times x minus x bar transpose times uh, the joint distribution. I'm sorry, the uh, var covariance matrix inverse times x minus x bar. In two dimensions, of course, it just simplifies to two dimensional variables. And the answer is the mutual information is one half the log of one minus uh, one over one minus r squared, where r is Pearson's correlation coefficient. So notice that perfect correlation will correspond to an infinite uh, mutual information. And finally, model selection. So if we've got a random variable x, let's suppose p of x is its true distribution, while q of x is an approximate distribution. Going back to finite number of outcomes here. There's our kullback liebler divergence. And, uh, so we're working with finite, so we can split this into two uh, sums uh, by taking the log of the ratio is the uh, difference of the logs. If we have m outcomes in sample space and we do n trials that yield c1 up to cx up to cm counts of the number of times those outcomes occur, then we notice that relative to approximating the true uh, probability density or probability distribution, the p of x here is constant. And our goal is to find the best q. So what is the best q? Well, the best q corresponds to the smallest divergence. In other words, we want the uh, x true and the x approximate to be very close to each other. But in order for those to be close to each other, we have to have the largest possible uh, summation of p log q. That we get essentially the one parameter model uh, minus k over 2, where k is the number of parameters, and so therefore the I AIC condition is 2k minus 2 times this p log q0 term, which is actually the log likelihood. So the smallest AIC gives you the best approximation. So we've introduced some more metrics uh, and in particular, mutual information, KL divergence, and the AIC. And those are going to be important as we go along.